Missionary Church. We're so glad uh, you're able to join us online. This is Facebook Live, and this is Visionary Church. And welcome everyone who's in attendance tonight. Uh, we have a nice crowd and good to see some faces that we, we love and adore and miss sometimes. Off with that. Amen. So, we want to just tell you some new announcements. First, let's tell you that we do have a different website page, a little easier to find us now. Visionarychurch.org. It's any easier than that, right? Visionarychurch.org. Pretty simple. Here's our announcement for the week. We'd like you to tune in tomorrow morning. Pastor Lynn Barletta and Pastor Scott Barreto. 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 Will be joining us tomorrow morning live on Facebook Live at 7 30 a.m. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, the Finding Your Purpose message. Uh, and you can find that by typing in Facebook.com slash finding purpose lv again facebook.com slash finding purpose lv did it say that right because i think jen's in the back taking notes <laughs> 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 for jen be sure to correct him if he does something wrong by the way the title mm -hmm. of tomorrow morning's message will be change impossible purpose into possible. Amen. Like Amen. Right? Amen. Ooh. Ooh. It's good. It's going to be good. Monday night, tomorrow night, November 29th, is our evening National Day of Prayer night. We do it every Monday night, 7 30 p.m. And then the following Monday will be the prophetic training. Sorry. Again, uh, Sorry. I think I have my announcement here. Yes. Would you like to? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> so, so there's no Zoom tomorrow? No. Just a prayer. So uh, people are out of town because of, of Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. That's why we're missing but, people tonight. Um, next Monday, <laughs> yeah. December 6th, yeah. first Monday of the month, as we always do on the first Monday of the month, it's a prophetic training message. Mm -hmm. Actually, Amen. we will be able to do that. Activate always the prophetic. The first Monday of the month, 7.30 p.m., we activate everything with prophetic training. Amen. So that's next Monday. If you want to find out more about that, it's a web page, pastor at visionarychurch.org for the Zoom links that you want to find us on. Thursday mornings, right here in this room, we have the men's Bible study. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And she can't go. Okay, she can she it. Yay, for the men. We are in, Luke, we are in chapter 8. Oh, we're just warping speed along. Boy, I tell well, you. I tell we started with like in September. And we've got up all the way up to chapter eight. So thank you. That's 7 30 a.m. If you want to find us on Zoom, pastor at visionarychurch.org. The Zoom link will be there to the Cody and I to, to listen to that. Friday mornings at 9 a.m. Ladies Bible study. Yay! Tough ground here. <laughs> uh, but that's at 9 a.m. again here and also on Zoom if you'd like to do that. And again, the links, simple, pastor at visionarychurch.org gets you into the Zoom link. I do want to make one more announcement. Next Sunday, uh, we get the pleasure of uh, having uh, Pastor George Butron, his brother. Since the last trip here in America, he yeah. went to Singapore Monday morning. He's been out of Singapore for a year mm -hmm. because of COVID. He gets to go back into Singapore Monday. Oh, Joyce is already there. Jo Joyce is already there. Yeah. You, my wife. Joyce is already there. Um, but George is doing me here on Monday. But in the meantime, George is bringing with him Sunday night. Uh, our guest speaker will be Pastor Sam Harry. So Sam is the pastor of Rivers of Water Church in Buket, Malaysia. Wow. And Sam is the chairman of Foursquare Ministries in Malaysia Woo! and the regional leader in all of Southeast Asia for Foursquare. Now, we know George oversees all of that, but Sam is one of the people in, in Malaysia. So uh, he's a pastor for many years in that church. He's the worship leader of that church, and he's a dynamic speaker who travels all over the world. Yeah. The message. So Can't wait to have that's that. That's next Sunday night. Uh, George says we'll love him. George says we'll love him. Okay, mm -hmm. it's from the, the side. Here. 
We're going to love Scott tonight, too. <laughs> and one final announcement, and then I'll go into my message here. Uh, we have here at the Visionary Gallery, which is the same address of this church, uh, an opening reception on December 4th at Saturday. It's an open reception from 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. It's artists with a vision. It's all of the instructors who work and teach here at Visionary School of Arts, showing their work. So there are um, there's, there's, oh, there's, 11 people. There's 11 14 people. of us. 14 total. Mm -hmm. Not all address? of them are picture. The address is good question. Good question. 1724 <laughs> Southeast Indian Street, Good Street. So that's next Saturday afternoon, 4 p.m. to 8. Uh, listen, you might find some nice Christmas gifts. Do some art. Amen. And there will be a, a reception of um, and cheese. <laughs> Jesus, and cheese. Amen. Jesus. Jesus. And, and cheese. Jesus. And cheese. Jesus. So you're welcome to join us. <laughs> Try to get away with that, lady. <laughs> you know, for those of you who are watching us on Facebook, we have fun here. So why don't you come here and see this up? Oh my gosh. All right. <laughs> I gotta get serious about on that. So I, I have a couple messages that I want to share with you. The first one always comes every week from Barbara Morse. Barbara blesses us every week with a message for this ministry and everyone who attends or watches us on Facebook. So let me share a message with you. You are building walls. You think, therefore, you're protecting, but in fact, they simply cause division. True protection and safety from not being only under the protection of my wing, but from being with and in me. My desire is that the body be united, one body moving under my direction. Tear down the walls, my beloved. Fear is no place in you. Don't limit your movement and your influence by building walls, for they only make your territory even smaller. I have set you free and taken down what separates you so that you can travel far and wide. The whole earth is filled with the glory of God, my beloved. In me, the whole earth is yours. Don't voluntarily put yourself in a prison of your own making. <laughs> Amen. Take what is yours. Freedom. Be free to go wherever I send you and speak whatever I tell you. The whole world is yours. Barbara shared that with a scripture, Isaiah 6 3. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Almighty. The whole earth is full of his glory. Thank, Thank you, Jesus. You, Lord, right? Thank you, Lord. Lord. So, my word today, let me pull up my technology and my new iPhone 13 Pro. And <laughs> Hannah helped me share. Thank you, Hannah. <laughs> So I want to give you some scriptures tonight on seeking the Lord. How many of us in this room really want to seek the Lord? I know I do. Oh yeah, hungry. Hungry, hungry for the Lord. So the first one is Matthew six thirty three. But seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Kingdom, yes. Proverbs eight seventeen. I love those who love me. And those who seek me diligently will find me. Deuteronomy. But from there you will seek the Lord your God and you will find him. If you seek after him with all your heart and with all your soul. Amen, Lord. You will. We will. Amen. Thank you, Lord. The final scripture I want to show on seeking the Lord tonight is from Hebrews 11.6. And without faith it is impossible to please him. For well, whoever would draw near to God must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who seek him. Amen, Amen and hallelujah for that. Yes. Well, thank you for that. Hope you could all get some some inspiration of seeking the Lord just a little bit more. Amen. This tithe and offering time again for those of you on Facebook. You could, if you choose, you get a tithe and offering to this ministry. On the webpage, just go on down and see the little link that you let me do Thank you for that. We bless you for that. But for those in person and those who can see, 
online. We have a message we'd like to share with you prior to giving a time and offering. So if everyone will stand, we'll decree this declaration on everyone. Together, please. As we give today from our hearts, we are sowing into the kingdom of God and believe the Lord for Forever our favor in all these areas, jobs or better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, a new building paid in full, finding money, bills paid off, debts removed and forgiven, royalties received, expenses decreased, blessings increased. Creative ideas and witty inventions, new businesses and new ministries. Thank you, Lord, for providing according to your riches, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God, to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's offering time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hey, and I'm going to pass the microphone over to you. This is my wife, my friend. I think most of us probably have that figured out, right? I don't know about that. I don't know. So, <laughs> welcome everybody. You are in for a treat. I am going to let Scott Barretta tell you a little bit more about himself, but I know that he has a history as a pastor in the ministry, studying under Lance Brown in the oh, ministry. Yeah. He knows uh, Andrew Gomez quite well, uh, been really plugged in for many years, and he's also in the marketplace now, which is very cool. But uh, our broadcast, I can't wait for that. And looking forward to more to come. So Scott, why don't you come up here? Michelle, we're glad to have you with us. Michelle and Scott's fine. And they live in Paul City, Detective the neighbor. We met at Juba Thomas. Oh wow. And wow. so yeah. glad to have you with us. Woo. Awesome. I will be taking an offering for Scott. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Wow, this is gonna be new. Two two new things. Holding a mic in my hand and talking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm usually singing with a mic in my hand. Right? <laughs> That's going to happen when I start using my hands here. <laughs> but, so uh, praise the Lord. It's good to be here. And uh, yes, we did meet. Uh, I pushed myself out to quote unquote network. You know, the N word I hate. <laughs> <laughs> I really do. It's just so goofy. Mm -hmm. Here's my card. You know, <laughs> so, this reminds me of uh, multi level marketing. We yeah. can't curse in church now. Sorry about that. Yeah. <laughs> Just don't like any of that. <laughs> so, um, praise God. Yes, it's good to be here uh, with my wife, Michelle. And I've been uh, doing ministry for quite some time now. Uh, I was on some kind of a curve the Lord threw on me, you know, which is usual, you know, and kind of spins you around in your days and confused. So, um, but I did uh, spend uh, a lot of time uh, listening to Lance Long Island and course of leaning as much as I can, seeing him in person whenever I can, and you know, he has a lot of online curriculum, you know, and single thing Andrew. I did meet Andrew and but I love Harris Bible College out in Colorado. I love Andrew and I can listen to him miles below and you know uh, and uh, that's that's what you get when you get new. <laughs> Combination of uh, kingdom and righteousness. You know, do things Jesus said to seek first. That's right. You know, we're seeking a lot of uh, messages but Kingdom and righteousness is what we set to seek. And we put them in that true. order for a specific reason. And mm -hmm. I won't go into that right now, but let's see. Uh, I'm accustomed to speaking for a long time, but uh, we got 30 minutes or so. 30, 40. Yeah, I'll give it to 30. But let the Holy Spirit lead. Yeah. I know he'll honor Yeah, your let time. the Holy Spirit he'll lead you. Do, time, you know, do what, what the Holy Spirit says so, to do. But, uh, praise the Lord. What I want to, I, I really want, I, I love the subject of who you are in Christ as far as your identity. As he is, so am I now in this world. Mm -hmm. I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Yes. You know, that is the who you are when it comes to Matthew 6, 33. Um, it's who I am. I am his righteousness. Mm -hmm. Now, what am I supposed to go do? Well, the kingdom. Now, that's what I'm supposed to do. And I like Christian business. I'm involved in different Christian business groups and help Christians mm -hmm. with business, mm -hmm. like, you know, launch business, et cetera, et cetera. But there's something that I always want to lay a foundation of. And it, you know, I get this look like uh, somebody looking at a cat, a, a new gate looking at a cat, a, a, yeah. a calf looking at a new gate, they say. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I'm not a country guy, I'm a New York guy. How do they say that? 
cow looking at a new bagel. How about a Long Islander looking like looking at a new bagel? <laughs> Not bagel, New York water. Okay, it's kind of strange looking. Yes. yes. <laughs> so I'll fit that into my profile. Mm -hmm. So then I get this look because to understand your purpose is one thing. Fantastic. I got a wonderful workshop. I could probably give you more clarity than you've ever had with simplicity on understanding your passions and what your purpose is. But more importantly, because this is not about us, it's about the purpose for your purpose. Mm -hmm. So I see lots of Christian businesses out there. You know, here's one thing about Christianity. We we created a subculture in the, in the world where we could sell books, tapes, preach, sing, tell jokes, do comedy. Uh, we can virtually do anything, make movies, without ever having to leave the four corners of the church. Yeah. And we can make a ton of money within this subculture. Then there's a lot of groups out there now saying, you know what, it's time to move this kingdom forward. You know what I mean? But all they're creating, even in their own words, I created this free uh, public platform because of all the censorship out of the other big tech, because we're creating a parallel world to the, to, you know, to the heathens, you know? And again, God never told the church to create a parallel universe. When Adam sinned, he didn't pull a new earth alongside this earth and say, you know what I mean, we'll just... We just dumped that one. We'll start a new one from scratch one day. God's never done that. He's not weak. He's God is fully convinced that Satan is defeated. Right. Amen. He really is. We're not convinced. Of that. Yeah. When I say where, I say who's the word weekly. That's for the church. Really. And when I do say church, <laughs> yes, I do mean us, the people. But when you hear me speak in the context of the organized church, please out the TV land. I am not anti-church. <laughs> Read my lips. <laughs> I'm not, not anti-church. I'm just anti-church. No. <laughs> I'm just anti-things that don't make sense, that are not in line with this. Right. Yes. You know what I mean? I'm, I, I, I have this thing. I just have this insatiable desire to see the kingdom manifest on earth. Amen. Amen. I mean, he said, on earth as it is in heaven. Amen. Yes. Amen. You know, yes. God's whole goal was that he who was in the unseen create a man in the unseen, breathe life to him, yep. you know, add a little dirt, and now put him on the scene of the seen world operating through the unseen of the man on the scene. Right. So that the seen world can look just like the unseen. Amen. Right? Yes, Lord. By working through the unseen portion of the man on the scene. Follow me? Yes. And that has <laughs> never changed. So let's start off. You know, I, I love barbecue. Anyone like barbecue? I got a beautiful smoker, and I just love barbecue. And I love the smell of, of, of mm, barbecued sacred cow. I just love it. I love <laughs> killing sacred cows. Things that oh, people know. believe. You know what I mean? God put the sickness on me to teach me a lesson. Then what are you going to the doctor for? Yeah. What are you trying to do? Cut class? Not, huh? <laughs> you know what, I'm what are you doing? Why are you even That's taking medicine good. for? What are you taking medicine for? Yeah. You know? Oh, so he gave he gave you the scripture for wisdom, but you're so knuckleheaded and hard headed, he has to give you cancer to teach you a lesson. Because right. apparently the lesson you've got to learn is not found in these pages. Right. These are the ridiculousnesses that we have been taught. Yeah. And let's start off with what is the purpose of me? If I say generally, what's the purpose of me? Is to glorify God. Right, to worship God. But in the garden, there was no church, there was no Christ. Right. There was no hungry That's right. to feed. There was no naked to clothe. They wind up being clothed, but they treaded in the clothes. You know? There was none of that. No band, nothing. I didn't need an hour and a half of worship, 10 minutes of word, just to get in some kind of an emotional nirvana so I can connect with God. Didn't need any of that. All I needed was to be in God's presence and walk with him in the cool of the day. That's what those words meant. We could keep Adam walk with God in his presence in the yes. spirit of the day. Amen. God wasn't like it's too hot out here. <laughs> Let's wait till sunset when it's a little cooler, you know, because that heat just you know, I'm a snowboard, you do realize that, right? I come to earth I come to earth in the winter, you know, I, I, you know 
<laughs> and when summertime comes, I'm back to heaven because it's ridiculously hot. <laughs> you know. So these are the things that make me go, oh, you know. So what is the purpose of me? I'm a mechanic. I'm a butcher, a baker, a candlestick man. I wear so many hats. How do you know one person that might wear more hats than me? And that's that one. <laughs> you know, and um, uh, but let's talk about this. You know, I, 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 I had a lot of issues. I was winding up a, a single parent raising two boys before I met my wife. I was raising them by myself for seven years, a little older than five years old. And, um, and what I realized was the consequences of purposeless living. Let's get down to that narrow. I like to like I like to break things apart into components so we can understand them. You understand? So the consequences of purposeless living: drug addiction, depression, repeated cycles of wrong jobs, wrong relationships, financial issues, homelessness, incarceration, fear of failure, stress, anxiety, fear of the future, panic attacks, um, the Sunday night heart attacks, stress, loss of identity. We need the personality disorders, promiscuity, having no value for life. You see this in the world today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We've seen this since the garden. There is nothing really new under the sun. Right. Right. That's right. You understand? You've seen this in the from the garden. And I realized at that time in my life, everyone was like, Scott, okay, come on, let's get together. We need to find a job. We gotta get a career. You're a single parent. We gotta do this. We gotta hustle. You know, and I took a, a sabbatical because I was like, just going out of my mind nuts. Because I felt I had no purpose. Mm -hmm. My relationship was my purpose. I was such an insecure wreck. Everything that I created as my world crumbled. Because I had no purpose. I didn't understand. And then I read Proverbs 29, 18. Where there's no vision, mm -hmm. the people perish. That's right. And the word perish means to cast off the restraint. Mm -hmm. To be unrestrained. And my pastor said, Scott, you jump from relationship to relationship, to job to job, to invention to invention, idea to idea, constantly. The only thing consistent about you is your inconsistency because you have no vision for your life. And because you have no vision, you are unrestrained. Mm. I raised my kids that way. Dad, you know, for my 16th birthday, my kid's 16th birthday, I said, here's the gift you're getting. I am officially the second person you talk to if you need any strong advice. The first person is the Holy Spirit. Do not come to me and say, Dad, I like this girl that's good. I have this issue with my teacher. I don't want to hear it unless you come to me with an answer that you thought you heard the Holy Spirit. There you go. And then I'll bring you that confirmation or wisdom or insight of what you perceive you're hearing. Okay, so, and another thing I did was I made sure, even though at that age they don't know, do they have a vision for their life? What do they want their life to look like? And whenever they said, should I go do this? I would say, A, is it for the vision? Or B, is it against the vision? Or C, what vision? <laughs> then it says, see me immediately. <laughs> so, and that's the way I live my life today. The books I read, the places I go, who I fellowship with, what I spend money on, what I spend my time on, time on. Listen, the vision and the dream God has to do answers your question of what to do. But many of us don't know what to do, don't know what God wants us to do in our life. So the A and B is not even there. And we're flopping around thinking we're going to organically by osmosis figure out. Nobody ever sailed, nobody ever flowed down a lazy river to destiny. Never. You know, mm -hmm. That's why you go over the waterfall. Because it's usually, <laughs> usually we're going the other way, upstream. Okay, we're not usually going downstream. Okay, so because of that, there's people with no self-control, self-centered, they're self-governed, and people require outside influences because of their inside weaknesses. You follow me? Yeah. And the real reality is, and I tell people this, I, you can go. I turned to a selfish book, lifecoachscott.com. <laughs> you know, I turned all my ministry into coaching because Jesus was the master at asking questions. In fact, when you asked him a question, he, he asked, asked you a question, question back. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and I just love coaching people and helping them to discover the purpose or to understand the word. Better. Okay. And I tell people, your life 
is a problem because you don't know where you fit on planet Earth as a solution. Where purpose is unknown, you will find abuse. My dad is a jet engine mechanic. God forbid he sees you using a vice grip or a plier on a nut. Right. If it's a half inch nut, you use a half inch wrench. You right. don't destroy the nut. That, that's not the purpose for that. Everything has a purpose. Where purpose is unknown, you will find abuse. And most of us spend our entire day abusing ourselves, working in jobs, doing things in relationships, and searching things and pursuing things that have nothing to do with the real. Mm -hmm. Let me segue to my major point. Even when you find out who you are, you still need to know the purpose behind your purpose. And that is Genesis 126, and that is the kingdom. But I like to break it down. Five questions people ponder. Who am I? Where am I from? Why am I here? What am I supposed to do? How am I supposed to do it? Who am I supposed to do it with? But the two interesting notes are Jesus only said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Now be careful with that. Because the word added to you literally means to be dropped in your life. <laughs> you know you got to explain everything. <laughs> that doesn't mean you sit around and the entire kingdom of God and everything he has for you drops from heaven and lands on your lap as you do nothing. That's not how it works. Because the just live by faith. And faith is active. Right. And not living by faith is sin. <laughs> just in case you're still under the law. <laughs> That's another story. <laughs> I'll see you one day. Okay? Not living by faith is sin. Okay? It's easy to be poor. Did you know being poor is sin? Because it takes no effort. Right? Okay? So so when you know who you are and you know what to do, okay, you'll begin you'll be able to start to flip the script on things going on in your life. What helped me was Isaiah 46, 9, that God has declared the end from the beginning. I finally discovered that the chicken came before the egg. <laughs> and you were created, so the lie in education, you understand, is that you evolve. Evolution. Right? So, and that's so evil. You see, believers look at it. So what's going on? I'm just following the, I'm just following the Lord's lead, you know, serving that church, king of words, and just loving on him. And, you know, I don't even know. I'm just going to. It's like you're going to organically stumble and trip into destiny. I'm sorry to tell you that. Service is important, but that's not the way this works. That's not the way this works. You know, so because God declared your end for the beginning, and he needs it clear. Matter of fact, he needs you to be doing your purpose way more than you want to do your purpose. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't understand. It's been 10 years, and you won't tell me. Okay, let's back the boss up a minute. <laughs> Trust me, 11 years ago, he wanted you to know, <laughs> okay? So you're not you're not learning how to listen for that because we live in this goldfish bowl called Christianity. I like the song you were saying, I am a child of God. The world called us Christians and we took the tagline and we took the entire brand of what the world tells us we are and we say we are Christians. I'm a child of God. You call me a Christian, have your way, but I'm a child of God, mm -hmm. you understand? So watch this now. Uh, he says, before I formed you, I knew you. I called you a blank to the nation, a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker, a prophet, before the foundations of the earth. Okay? Now watch this. Jeremiah 29, 11. He says, I have a hope in the future and expected aim for you. And then we'll get into Ephesians 2, 10 later in the Amplified, which, man, it's awesome. But let's take something apart here. I stumbled across this a couple of years ago. Revelations 4, 11. If you have your Bible, your app, whatever you want to do, Turn to that. It says this. It says, Thou art worthy. Man, we're going to take this thing apart right here. Even if it takes you just a half hour to take this apart, it's going to be a win. Even if I never get to the rest of this message, because I have a funky feeling I'm like spending more time with you people. <laughs> you know why? Because I got a lot to say. <laughs> and there's, it's very rare. I praise God for Lynn and Tony. I met, I, this is really weird. I met him before I met her. Or the, I, I didn't even know they were married. I want you to meet my husband. I said, I can't hang with him at him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it's crazy that we think yeah. scary a lot. <laughs> so it's like, man, get my sister from another mister right here. Yeah. You know? It's just crazy. So thou art worthy. Revelations 4.11, open your bottom there. It says, thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. 
For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure, pay attention now, they are and were created. Okay? Let's take this apart. Okay? Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory. What is receive? Receive means to take. On the back of my truck, I have a res hitch, a receiver hitch, right? Re means retake. We were singing before. We talked about reward. Ward is a location, children's ward. I have a great reward. I, the kingdom is a reward. That means you're just taking it back. Listen, everything we're doing and receiving, the reason why we're receiving it is because we have already had it. Wow. Well, Genesis 1 is just as real as Genesis 2. So before, before any day passed, all of your days were written before any day passed. Those days are just as real in the unseen as they are in the seen. Matter of fact, they are more real in the unseen than they are in the seen because everything you see is tangible, which means it's temporary. Okay? So that means that's the word receive. That was just a free part. When you're learning to receive healing, it's not something new. It's something you are receiving. You've already had healing. All faith is past tense. Okay? So, so if God's worthy to receive, mm -hmm. that means, let's use the word retake. Glory and honor is what? It's the full essence, the full expression, the full position, and the full rank of something. Mm -hmm. That's glory. A rose, when it's closed, it's not in its glory. When a rose is open, it's in its glory. Mm -hmm. Okay, so glory and honor. He can retake the full expression and position and rank. And power, omnipotent. He's the only source of unlimited potential. Amen. Yes, he is. Potential of things that exist in power. Okay, power that exists with potential. Okay, pleasure. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure. Pleasure is the same word, will. And will is the same word, pleasure. Okay? Created. That means something has an established end from its beginning. Okay. So let's break the first part. For thou art worthy, O Lord, to have returned to you the full essence and expression reflecting your omnipotence and your Godhead. God is worthy to have returned back to him the full essence and expression of everything reflecting your omnipotence and your God. Pause. Put that. <laughs> Ephesians 1.18. If you want to go there, you can go. If you just want to listen, listen. That's the middle race. <laughs> Get to the end. <laughs> I wait for you, but I can't. So Ephesians 1.18, watch this. He's saying, Paul, he's saying that the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you might know what is the hope of his calling and what is the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Okay, that's verse 18. So you can know and understand this immeasurable and unlimited and, surpa uns and the surpassing greatness of his power in us and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. In verse 20, we can just, let's just go right through 19. And what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power? I said that already. Verse 20, which he wrought in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places. By the way, you are seated in heavenly places yes. with Amen. him. Yes, we are. You understand? That's the word Iranos. Okay? The word of power and love. Okay? Why am I talking about this? Because you must understand, you are not a human on earth, just haphazardly living, trying to discover your paths and pur purpose so you can make a living. Because everyone wakes up in the morning looking for food, water, clothing, shelter, and relationships. You are somebody who is seated in heavenly places. Mm -hmm. And you have to understand, who you are so you can know what you're supposed to go do. And so when you're doing it, you'll understand the capacity of why you're doing it and 
the reason why you're doing it and the ability and the power that's in you for a reason. Look, God didn't give you this power for no reason. See this beautiful yeah. artwork that's created here? I'm, I'm reading to you the reason why he gave that to you. Mm -hmm. It has this potential in it. Yes. You understand? Mm -hmm. It has world-changing potential in it. Yes. You understand? So watch this. He released his full potential, all of his power that's existing in possibility, that lower potential, when he raised Christ from the dead and seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places, and he raised us up with him and released, we're on a lease agreement with planet Earth, released mm, yes. his entire oh, will and mm. pleasure with that power in us. In us. Yes. It's in us. Yes. yes. Well, I don't know where I'm going to get the money and yeah. start a business. I don't know. what. Listen, you don't know who you are. You are like a nuclear bomb walking around <laughs> waiting for something to go off. That's right. That's you right. You follow me? Yes. Verse 21, it speaks of the position. Verse 22, restored position. Verse 22. Verse mm -hmm. 21 says, by the way, okay. so when you're wondering or doing whatever you're doing and when you're painting, whether you're a butcher, a baker, a candlestick maker, here's what's going on. You are far above all principality, power, might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this world, but also the one that is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things, so to the church. Amen. Amen. See, so before you move forward, what am I supposed to be when I grow up? First, you need to figure out who you are mm -hmm. and what you're filled with. You understand? Because that's yes. what matters. Yes. When you squeeze an orange, what do you get? Orange juice. When I squeeze you, what do I get? <laughs> this is, I'm reading. Yes. I'm reading what I should get when I squeeze you. Amen. This is what you're filled with. Why? 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 Verse 23. That's what he amplified. <clears throat> I'm tying it together with 4.11. Because I still haven't finished the second half of Revelation 4.11. Okay? Verse 23. The church, which he's a kind of which is the God. The, the Supreme Mother Church, a headship exercise throughout the church. Verse 23, ready? Mm -hmm. Which is his body, the fullness of him. Mm -hmm. oh, this is going to be really hard. Mm -hmm. This is going to be hard to swallow. That's one of those giant vitamin E's. <laughs> you know, it says, wait a minute, who fills all in all? Mm. For in that body lives the full measure of him who makes everything complete and who fills everything everywhere with himself. Yes. My goodness. Do you realize yes. this? Do you realize that God is with you with the same dead raising power, authority, yes, or principalities yes, and power? Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. It is the treasure within that earthen vessel. Mm -hmm. Why? Why? You know why? Because he needs you to go in everywhere because he fills everything everywhere with himself. Yeah. Listen, right. CNN ain't filled with himself. No. <laughs> Fox News ain't filled with no. himself. The media is not filled with himself. Mm -hmm. Hollywood's not filled with himself. Education is not filled. None of the mountains on which lie the fundamental principles of the earth are not filled with him. Mm -hmm. right. I know one that is the right. church. Right. I'm sorry. The religious mountain. Because <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, there's a lot of empires being built, but there's not a lot of kingdom built. Yeah, that's, that's right. right. There's a lot of parallel universe building, mm -hmm. but there's not a lot of kingdom building. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Listen, I'm going to read it. I'm going to say something that's going to shock you. It's going to shock you. Maybe it's the first time you ever heard it. <laughs> it's going to hurt. See, I'm out there. Listen, I'm out there at a bar, restaurant bar, singing Frank Sinatra, mm -hmm. Curry Coleman, Andrea Bacelli, mm -hmm. Tom Jones. She's a lady. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You know, I'm singing my heart out, telling people, God bless you. Thanks for coming tonight. That's all it took. Baptizing people in the ocean. 
cast out devils of a woman in the back of a Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> <laughs> leading people to the Lord. Go, Lord. <laughs> I got a bar full of people with a beer and a lighter yeah. singing Josh Rober. I, I knocked the buzz out of the entire bar. Everyone went home afterwards. A Jewish guy said, What it was? I'm a Jew. I'm a Jew. I know we really different, but what was that cloud thing coming off you while you were singing? It was a cloud on you. A man literally saw the anointing of God on me saying, Oh, what we Lord. He goes, I had goosebumps. I had goosebumps. It's good. <laughs> Listen, I'm a voice impersonator, so you never know what's going to come. That was Jackie Mason. I'm the one. See if you want me to preach like Sylvester Stallone. Oh that my goodness! Oh, that's good. Oh, little Ronnie Dangerfield, you know. You. I do a skit where Ronnie Dangerfield is John the Baptist. Oh no! I'm not even worthy to tell you. When I was baptized, when I was baptized. When I was baptized, my father gave me a rock and a rope. He said, throw yourself at the deep end. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. That was great. <laughs> oh, don't give a fuck. Yeah. <laughs> and Peter was, give a God great. I don't know that guy. I met him like two or three times. <laughs> don't worry, the angel was Yoda. Yes, Lord Jesus. <laughs> You said let the Holy Spirit leave. Okay? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, Yoda. Anyway, where was I before I really interrupted myself? Okay, so he knows all things and everything. You know where I was going? <laughs> John 3.16. John 3.16. Listen, I have a newsflash. For God so loved the world. The world. <laughs> For Christians so hate the world. Right. Love the world. They, Christians are funny. Christianity is is the chapel on the Titanic. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> it really is. We got a potluck at seven, guys. <laughs> the whole ship is going down, folks. Yeah. Well, that's just the world. Listen, I don't care what your technology <laughs> is. I don't care if you are post rapture, pre rapture, no rapture, in rapture. I don't, I don't care what your eschatology is. You better be found in faith, busy. Come on, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever you don't finish in class, you take home for homework. My nephew, you know, a young Christian kid that he works with, he says, "Oh, I know you're a Christian too, but why are you why are you wasting your time being an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business?" Well, don't you watch the news? Jesus is coming back soon. He did. So this kid's out there hating his job and hating his life. Mm. Listen, signs and wonders. <laughs> signs and wonders are for the unbelievers. Come on. Yeah. I know you're raising your hand, Lynn, but <laughs> you might not want to raise them when I finish my statement. Uh, I, no, you can. You can. Listen, signs and wonders are for the unbelievers. Right. So you're out there trying. Let me see. Come on. You know what? My neighbor's watching me every morning. He sees me praying on my piano, on, on my patio. You know, I'm going to try to walk across my pool and blow his mind. You know what I mean? Listen, <laughs> you know what a sign and wonder is? An excellent employee. Come on. With a kingdom mindset. Amen. Who prays and comes before he goes to work and fiddles and figures out <laughs> solutions for his fault that's, that's going right. on in his mind. Hey. Come on. You understand that Joseph, David, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego on the back row? You understand these things? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You can be a sign and wonder. If you just live the kingdom life, you can be a sign That's and wonder. right. That's right. My boss says, Scott, I never met anyone who falls in poop and comes out smelling like a rose more than you. Never laid hands on I'm not going to lay hands on him a few times. Never laid hands on him. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Nothing. Didn't show him to the condo to Didn't do any of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Just expressing Christ in what I do. That's right. In singing. Amen. In singing. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. That is your gift. God gave you that gift. You should be on America's goddamn. You know what I mean? <laughs> People glorifying God for my gift. Mm. I didn't say nothing. No, who didn't even know me Christian? I'm a, like an Esther. You know? Push a, uh, push a bra, great makeup, ready to go. <laughs> he just wants us to have influence in the culture. He doesn't care. <laughs> you can't even see the world.
word God's not even used in the, in the book of Esther. Yeah. Well, then sometimes you just keep your mouth shut. Yeah. It says when the kingdom of God is preached as a witness. Come on. Anyway. <laughs> For God so loved the world. You gotta keep trying to find it. It's not like way too much fun. For God so loved the world. Guess what? That's the word cosmos. It's the system, order, and the arrangement of things that make the world go wrong. You know what it is? It's education. It's government. It's healthcare and big pharma. How do you like them working out for you so far? <laughs> it's media, sports, and entertainment. So, for God so loved, again, again, what the seek first the kingdom and rights. Why does he keep putting things in front of people? Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness. He so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. So that they, wait a minute, the world came before they, so that they, why didn't he say, for God so loved the people of the world? It's really interesting. That's right. Jesus was in the mm -hmm. desert. Mm -hmm. And Satan approached him and said, if you worship me, worship, if you bring worth to me, if you worship me, mm -hmm. I'll give you all the kingdoms of the world. Because they were turned over to me. And I can give them to the never on the earth. And the church is still convinced that the devil owns the kingdom of the world. <laughs> Who have they turned over to him? The devil. Let's, let's stop, stop the bus a second. Why didn't did not why didn't the devil offer Jesus people? Hmm. Because if you get the kingdom. Guess what it comes with? People. 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 Oh. oh, wow. <laughs> the kingdom comes with people. <laughs> the kingdoms of this world shall become the kingdoms of our Lord. Mm -hmm. You know why? Also, God's just interested in power, authority, and kingdom and things. And what about us? You are the us that make up the kingdom. Yes. He's interested in it. He's interested in the insurance kingdom, in the car sales kingdom, in the painting kingdom. He's interested in every kingdom that we fill as an earthen vessel go in and we fill all in all and everything, everywhere. Mm -hmm. Amen. We are like the leaven. Mm -hmm. But right now we live in the fill. Mm -hmm. And good luck taking leaven out of the mouth. Yeah. I know someone that can do. Yes. Only God can do. Now you can cremate my body and throw it over the ocean and parrot fish can eat it poop it out and turn it into a whole reef and God will find every atom to reconstruct it if he wants yes. to. Right? Come on. Absolutely. Yes. Nothing is too hard for God. You understand? Yeah. So look at the world the way we're, the world is today. You understand? The reason why the world is in the condition that it's in is because believers do not know who they are. In That's Christ. right. They don't know that who they is are. Right. That's correct. Yeah. They don't know the assignment. That's right. Mm -hmm. For their assignment. Mm -hmm. Come on. Well, the Lord put in my heart to start up a car dealership. Why? Mm -hmm. So I can make money. Why? So I can pay my bills. Why? So I can be a good business. Why? Oh, Why? Why? You know what's not included? So I can shape the entire culture of car sales so that it reflects God's kingdom. Amen. So that everybody in the kingdom of car sales says, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord and let that guy teach us his ways because for some reason he's the only guy selling cars yeah. and we're not. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. And we're taking for people a ride in the finance department, adding a few points for me and the wife so I can get a new jet ski. And we're, 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 we're taking people for rides everywhere in dentistry, in medical, in pharmaceutical. Everywhere is corruption, corruption, yeah. and corruption. Right. Well, Scott, that's because it's the world. You have to expect that. Yeah, he came to save the world. Yes. Uh -huh. Amen. And the way to save the world is you put saved people in it. Thank you, uh -huh. Lord. That's good. Yep. You don't just turn it over to the devil. God has never changed his mind about Genesis 1 26. Now let's read the whole thing. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for keeping this squirrel chasing maniac focused. Okay. <laughs> oh, look. <laughs> Is that you watch? <laughs> okay. watch. Ready? So, Revelation 4 11. Thou art worthy, O Lord. Remember? I'm going to go to the first part. We broke it down. For thou 
are worthy, for thou art worthy, are worthy, O Lord, to have returned to you the full measure and expression, reflecting your omnipotence and Godhead. Power. For thou Power. hast created Power. all things, mm. filling them like a plinky, okay? <laughs> filling all things, filling all things with potential and an expected end from the beginning. And you've done this because it pleases you and it brings you pleasure and glory. Mm -hmm. Stop the tape, go back, listen to that again. That is the purpose for me. And if that's not the foundation to the core of your being, you are going to be still missing it in business. Whether you're an entrepreneur or an entrepreneur. How many of you are in full-time ministry? You better all raise your hand. Yeah, right. right. Listen, I tell people this, go like this, go like this. If you feel a pulse, you're in full-time ministry. That's right. Everything you do is ministry. That's right. Ministry is not a religious word. That's right. Ministry of defense. Ministry of the government's full of ministries. Okay? We are political people in the kingdom of God. We yeah, are that's right. citizens. That's right. Right? Yes. We're fellow citizens. Is the word politicians where we get the word politician? You are a politician of God's kingdom. And what you're supposed to be doing, okay, is acting like the gatekeeper of the mountain God yes. assigned you to. Thank Whether you, Lord. Whether you're in the major leagues, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Going to be a Hollywood star or a political uh, person. Or you're in the minor leagues at the PTA or at a big person. It really doesn't matter. Or doing church clothes. It really doesn't matter. You fill a niche mm -hmm. with everything. Amen. He said he wants everything filled with everything, all in all, with him himself. Amen. You understand? Yeah. Think of the rule like that jelly donut at Dunkin' Donuts where that woman takes that thing and Filled that sucker full of jelly. <laughs> That's what God was on. That's what his desire is. You follow me? Yes. Now, now get this now. Read it carefully. We don't share in God's glory. Hmm. You know what we share? We share in God's pleasure. Hmm. We share in God's pleasure. Good. Ephesians 2.10. Let me read something real quick. 20 minutes. Oh, the good life and the food seems to be the good life. Right? The good life. Watch this. Do you know God has a good life for you? Or are you one of them prosperity teachers? No, come back next week. I'm going to talk to you how to stay broke and die. Any disease. Whatever, whatever disease you'd like to Google, come back next week. I'll, I'll, I'll show you how to choke to death on your own survival, whatever you want. And I'll make sure you're broke by the time we leave, because I will manipulate you for the largest offering that you've ever had in your life. No, you won't have to worry about making money or being healthy with me next week. Again, that's the ridiculousness that we try to wrap our brains around. God has a good life for us. Yeah. Yeah. Want to hear it in his word? The Amplified of the world. You know, read the King James. Listen, the King James is the Amplified version. A man fought with me. You're not using the King James. I can't go to your Bible group no more. I said, okay, what do you teach them? I teach them the Greek King James. I, I said, do you expound and explain and expand on the scripture? Why, yes, I do. I said, well, then you don't teach from the King James. I said, if you wrote down everything you said about that verse and put it in a book, it would not be called the King James. You see what I'm saying? So, again, more sacred cows. But watch this. Ephesians 2.10. For we are God's own handiwork. His workmanship. Yes. Create. Oh, God recreated in Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Well, I know I always wanted to do this all my life, but when I got born again, the Lord put it on my heart to feed the hungry. Well, what did you like to do before that? <laughs> well, I was uh, I was an engineer and I was working on this design, you know. But now I I gave all that up, and I'm in Haiti because I see oh. those kids in Haiti are so hungry. <laughs> So that's not true. So what are you doing? Well, I have a 501c3 and I'm trying to raise funds. I said, you know, 
I was looking at the drawings you showed me on the invention you have as an engineer. Did you know if you got this thing patented, uh, you could buy the island of Haiti yeah. with the profit that you made? Yeah. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> but again, yeah. there's just, you know, what do you yeah. call a phone doctor? Uh, you know? mm -hmm. That's what I am. I help people because they have tennis elbows and they got like a, a dislocated shoulder. Because most of them walk around in the self righteous <laughs> martyrdom mm -hmm. of what they sacrifice for God that God never ever told them to sacrifice. That's right. Wow. I gave up, you know, I was going to be in the X Games as a downhill skier and a snowboarder, but, you know, I saw those little kids in the I'm always thinking on Haiti, you know what I mean? <laughs> I saw something, some big need, and you gave it all up for the cross. You know? Yeah, yeah. And how's that going? Well, it's really hard. Yeah, and, and all the people that like to snowboard, are they all going to hell now because you were assigned to get them born again? Yeah. Because you had something, an affinity with them, so you have easy access to their heart through the sport. And now you're here in Cucamonga, flotting nets, swatting nets, trying to raise money when you could have won the X game again and bought the entire country. You would have never had to ask for a dime. Okay, am I being too sarcastic? No. Okay, good. All right, so we are his own handiwork, his workmanship, recreated in Christ Jesus. See that? You remember, you were born again before the foundations of the earth. You understand? A key to your passion is, what's your passion? I just, I just love feeding the hungry. Okay, recreated before the, there was no hungry when he created you. If you like painting, paint. Then sell a painting and pay the cash and feed the hungry. <laughs> so sometimes you have to get this mindset that there's none of this stuff that is your value, but your job. And we're out there trying to monetize values rather than monetizing giftings. So he recreated us in Christ Jesus, born anew, that we may do the good works which God predestined. The church is doing a lot of things that they call good. Right? A lot of good things, but are they doing God things? Right. Come on. But he That's just right. said to do the good works. Well, guess what? There's none good but God. So you're either doing a God thing or you're not. That's right. You're just not, listen, it's either good or bad. Mm -hmm. Listen. When good people do nothing while evil prevails, mm -hmm. you are being complicit with the devil. Yes, that's right. That's right. What is that sound of bleeding sheep I hear every time we talk? You know? You follow me? That's how we can be complicit with evil. And he's saying here, do the good works. What good works? Everything I just told you, but well, the reason why I told you, and then that's going to be the foundation of why he gave you that talent to give you such a such, which God predestined, planned beforehand for us, taking paths. You know, when it says taking paths, that's your choice. You don't have to take that path. Mm -hmm. It says taking paths which he prepared ahead of time that we should walk in them, living the good life which he prearranged and made ready for us to live. Amen. We are his workmanship, his handiwork. We created in Christ Jesus that if we do these good works, what good works, the God works that are in us to go do, we have this treasure in earth and vessels that shows forth God's glory. Why? Because he's trying to receive back the glory he has with everything that he put in you. Amen. Follow me? Yes. You follow me? Yes. Eric Little from Chariots of Life. I'm dating myself now. I love myself. No, I'm dating myself as I'm dating. No, I'm dating myself. So I'm dating my wife. So, so remember chariots of life? So Everett Little was a runner, right? He was my chick fil He wouldn't run on Sunday, right? But that was his thing, you know? So he said this. He said, I believe God made me for a purpose. And and he also, see that's purpose. And he also made me fast. Passion. I believe he made me for a purpose, and he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel his pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yes. Man. Yes. When I sell cars, I feel his pleasure. Yes. When I paint, mm -hmm. I feel his pleasure. Amen. When I sing, Inglebrook Humper King, <laughs> I feel his pleasure. <laughs> when I sing Frank Sinatra, I feel his pleasure. Yes. 
when I sing worship, just in case there's Christians watching, <laughs> when I sing worship songs too, I feel its pressure. Oh, well. <laughs> I sang worship for 17 years, and Christians say, you know, you should get that voice to the Lord and sing at church. I said, I sang in church for 17 years. Can you quit to sing these secular songs? I said, yeah. Here's a phone call. Call the lady I just got born again and baptized. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Tell her, uh, tell her it wasn't spiritual. Now, don't get me started on the secular and the sacred that the church has created, which is a lot. Mm -hmm. It's all sacred. Right? Oh, yeah. Unless it's perverse or falls in these categories, and even then, you know what I mean? Um, we have to be careful about what we call secular and sacred. Are you getting it? Yes. I like it. Mm -hmm. I like mm -hmm. it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good. Somebody just go like this. Okay. <laughs> you know? Amen? Amen. Amen. So what glorifies God if it was only Adam in the garden? Work. Work glorifies <laughs> God. Amen. The number one way you glorify God is by I must do the work that he sent me to do. Because this is why I was sent. Doing the work you were called to do. If you love to paint and you're a receptionist and you're miserable and angst and frustrated <coughs> and depressed and aggravated and you're not doing the thing he called you to do, you are not bringing him glory. If a cheat is running 52 miles an hour and not 67, it's not bringing him glory. If we were to take you and wind you up, if God was to say, look at this. See what I made? This, this, this jack on my shoulder. I can't see what she does. Mm -hmm. If God was to wind you up and put you down, what would you be doing? I hate this job. Kids don't do it here. I wish I could just go do this. I wish you could do that. I'm stuck in debt. I have no way of doing this. God, I hate it. And God's going to take that thing and say, something's wrong. <laughs> it's called being recalled back to the factory. Because it came with like a thing, instructions. It says, yep, if you do this, it does this. But I'm pretty sure I made him to bake cakes. Why he's in accounting, I have no clue. There's not even anything about numbers on this instruction sheet. And he's trying to recall you with a holy dissatisfaction and if that doesn't work, they just allow these morons that put out this pandemic out there to get you fired. Yeah. <laughs> Seeing you're not gonna fire yourself. Take <laughs> 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 getting a little push. <laughs> I hate this job, I hate this job, I wish I could just open up my own business. Carol, can you come to the office? Yeah, we're gonna have to lay you off. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> See, that's funny, Carol. You pray to me every morning about the job you gave, and you just want to go do such and such. And now, guess what? Now you got no choice. <laughs> right? Yeah. Sometimes God answers our prayers, and we're like, what can you do that for? <laughs> man, oh man, God is good. Yes, he is. All the time. We were created to work, and work is worship. <laughs> Work is worship. Think back in Adam in the garden. You know, Father? Yes, son. Man, my legs are tired. Sit down. What did Adam just sat on the floor? Make a chair. Watch a chair. Everything you see on the earth was inside Adam, including you. Everything you see. So he cut down a tree. He made a tree. cut down a tree. That's right. Listen. <laughs> My green globalist here. He cut down a tree to make a chair out of wood. <laughs> and you know that chair? Glorify God. Cutting down that tree? Glorify God. Making a saw? Glorify God. Creating nails? Glorify God. Everything yeah. in Romans says, mm -hmm. you can everything. find God's glory in everything. Mm -hmm. There's Amen. nobody with an excuse. Because everything on this earth is groaning. Amen. 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 When That's the good. sons of men take their leadership role, mm -hmm. your dog loves it when you tell it what to do. 
waking you up at 3 a.m. to go pee in the lawn, he's telling you what to do. Yeah. <laughs> right. My father, I got this dog trained. And I said, oh, I see it. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell. That dog tells you everything. Did that? that dog controls your entire life. <laughs> oh, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> Shamu just wants to be told to do something. Now, I'm not about abusing animals, okay? But you understand what I'm saying. Everything. Your avocado tree wants you to command it to grow avocado. Yeah. And I've seen that. Mm-hmm. I've seen big trees that you screw because mm. people speak to it every day. Right. All of creation is growing so that the sons of man That's step right. up and they will come through the law. All of creation. That's every mountain of God's government, every kingdom, every nook and cranny of the planet Earth needs to reflect that. The book of Acts says that Jesus is being redeemed in the heavens and through the restitution of all things. So go home tonight, unpack your rapture suitcase, because you're not going anywhere. <laughs> Make sure you got some oil in your bio there, Come little on. virgin friends, and just get busy doing what God told you to do. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. By the way, sarcasm in Greek is the tearing of the flesh. I'm not apologizing. Father, I just thank you, Lord God, for ministering to the listeners, Lord. For lighting that little spark of curiosity within them, an aha within them to say, it ain't a wonder why I'm here. It ain't a wonder why I'm miserable because I'm not doing what you created me to do. I haven't even started looking. It ain't a wonder that I am doing what you created me to do, and it's still not working. Because maybe you just don't know the purpose for your purpose. Because it isn't just only about you. And I thank you, Father, for the listeners. Thank you that they had a hearing for you so that these words don't fall. Hallelujah. In Jesus name. Thank you, Amen. Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Yes. Powerful, powerful, powerful. Yes, amen. Can I let a cat out of the bag? Is it coming off? No. I haven't preached in four years. <laughs> I knew that. I, knew that. I, 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 I just yeah. like yeah. everything in ministry just yeah. shut down. It's like the door didn't close. It's, like it's slammed. Uh, and, 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 and it's like this yeah. felt so like this. Yeah. Talking comes yeah. easy. Yeah. <laughs> But this was a thank you so much. I'm honored. I really appreciate you winning my really, really appreciate that. We are on the same page. We are on the same page. There's just not a lot of us on that page. There's a remnant on your page. Yeah. And I got workshops. I got workshops on, on your heart's desire. I did a lot of training with Lance Long. Spent a lot of years listening. I mean, under his umbrella. He probably doesn't know me from having to I mean, I'm having to you know, when you sow into that, mm-hmm. you're a partaker of that. You know, and, and, and Miles Monroe, and uh, understanding how to identify your heart's desires. Mm-hmm. Understanding the course of a dream. The seven mountain man. What your personality is like. Am I a dominant and influencer, charismatic, you know, the disc profiles. And I mean, I could just look at everybody and anybody online, just reach out to me and let's get that egg unscrambled. Website. My website is just livecoach.com. I, I used to have Scott Myrtle Ministries, but if I guess, guess I'm going to have to remake that again because it's you. you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Scott Myrtle Ministries. But this is ministry. It really is. And I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we need more of this type of teaching. And yes. I, I will tell you that I grew up in the monastery room too. And, uh, you know, I last all now followed this teaching for many years. And we need to understand the teaching of the seven mountains and why it's so important mm-hmm. and why we're not terribly concerned about filling all the seats here. Yeah. We're a whole lot more concerned about what's going on there and where God can send us and where God can use us, make a new business. You know, you're a right, right where you are, Denise. 
I, I think so as the goddess conjures a light and, and just everybody right where they're at your business. Amazing. Your business, we have a lot of people the business here at Apple, they all know you. They've all been affected by your life. It's it's so awesome. So um, I would just like to take an offering for Scott and I would like to bless him. I would like to uh, bless him in a way that would be a supernatural. You know, God does call you sometimes away from the ministry for a while and put you on the backside for a while, doing all kinds of kingdom stuff, and then he calls you back in again. So I would just like to bless him. You can make checks out to BCI, or you can use the um, credit card slip in there and just write on the check for Scott, and we'll know what to do. And uh, we want to bless him. Father, I thank you. We're just going to hear from the Holy Spirit right now. That God, this this is a man, this is a, a, a kingdom message we desire to sow into. So, Father, speak to us loud and clear. Give us the exact right amount, exactly what you want us to do. And then, Lord, thank you that there will be a seed going into this ground and that there will be a, a harvest that will be stinging even a year from now, six months from now, even a month from now, because Elaine said seasons are changing fast. Mm -hmm. So I thank you, Lord, that you are with us. And if anybody wants prayer, you can go ahead and turn that off. Do you know how to? I think um, Miss Hannah knows how to turn it off, but there is an off from somewhere. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I'll go do it. But we love you all, so we're going to say goodbye to you in Facebook night. Stop. Amen. Uh, Amen. Thank you, Scott. And share. Oh,